I gave an example about this uh, unique change in, in thinking about children with brainstem glioma. There's another disease that has, um, has been an incredible challenge to treat. It's called atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumors in, in infants predominantly. These are children who are between the ages of six months and three years of age. Very, very rapidly growing tumor, uh, resistant to almost all therapies that, that we've been able to employ, although there's been some hints of some success recently. And it's only been in the last you know, five years or so that we've been able to identify this unique subset of tumors. It's been misclassified in the past. So we have this ability to classify it better, but now we have, um, uh, I can say, a brand new model system for ATRT that has been developed in, at UCSF, for instance, where we've gotten tumor from a, a young child, a 10-month-old child, and have been able to grow it very successfully in this model system. So now we have this, um, uh, this tumor tissue growing live on a regular basis that will be available for years that we can start to test specific strategies on and using this genomics and, and find new markers as opposed to guessing can we do this, can we do that, which has really not worked. So I'm very excited about that sort of uh, research as well. And I think that disease, which is also uniformly uh, fatal, unfortunately, uh, we're going to make quick inroads in. And, and I, I see that happening very, very soon. Part of all this has been, again, the difficulty in getting access to drugs, to having companies agree to give us their drugs, to change sort of this bias against doing research in, in children, and I think this has to change. It, it just totally has to change. And I think that's where advocates and patients and support groups have to constantly put pressure on Congress and the FDA to change their stance about how these things are done.